first dive on any shipwreck is always problematic, but the Guslav was especially so because here we had a huge ocean liner in relatively deep water. It was a mass of twisted and broken steel, nothing that resembled a ship. And as we moved aft, we found more and more of the same twisted and broken metal, evidence of, of a force way beyond nature. We saw evidence of cutting torches. We saw evidence of explosions that had burst outward from the hull. I found myself now on the stern, a part of the ship that I completely recognized. We were seeing a part of the ship that was very much like it was that night that it sank. Suspended in the water, we were looking up at unmistakable brass letters that spelled out Wilhelm Gustav. But everywhere now we could see the evidence of a live, vibrant ship. It really was quite well preserved. The teak of the deck, the wooden cap of the handrail. This is what we had expected to find. As I ascended deeper, it became not unlike the, the center of the ship, twisted and broken. And then eventually we hit bottom. We were as far and as deeply penetrated into the ship as we could go. I had dove on many shipwrecks in the past and seen evidence of the dead. This was the Baltic. If, if a body of water would preserve evidence of, of those people, we'd be here. And yet, there was no evidence of the dead. In fact, there was no evidence of passengers. There was none of their possessions. All the thousands of things you associate with thousands of passengers were gone. There was nothing. You're left with this, this question of where, where could it have gone? Certainly, it couldn't have drifted out of the ship. For some reason, the Guslav had been stripped of everything associated with humanity. <laughs>